All right, I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get things started. Getting started a minute late. I just have to say I had an emergency wardrobe change right before we started. I, um, for those who have been on the other sessions, I just realized that I was wearing the same sweater in like two or three of the previous ones. So I had to go up and change my shirt. Now I've got my client success swag on. We're good to go. Um, but thanks to everybody that's joining. Um, as I said, I'm Mark Stoddard as always. I'm from Client Success. I've um, got Dave Blake, our CEO, he's on the call, um, and we are pumped to have our first repeat guest of 2020, Megan Macalusa from ESG. Megan, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Mark. Good to be here yeah, as thrilled. always. Yeah, that's right. We're thrilled to have you. Um, and if you didn't see our first webinar that we did back in January, what we did is we talked about why customer success should embrace owning revenue. If you haven't seen that, Go to our YouTube page, go back and watch it. Really good session. Um, in a second, I'll also pop the pop the link in the chat pane so you guys can see it there. But um, we got a bunch of really good feedback on that. So we knew when we were doing this this series, we had to, to get Megan back on. So we are thrilled that you could join us. Um, so game plan for today. First, we're gonna have Dave, as always, share a couple things at the top. And then we'll dig into today's topic around how to push through big projects during the during the slowdown or the downturn. So Dave, you there? Yes, hey, thanks for having me. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great. I'm coming to you from uh, Silicon Slopes here in Utah. Uh, love to see in the chat, uh, chat um, window where everybody else is coming from. So if you're there, tell us where you're coming from. Uh, but grateful to be with you again. Thanks for joining us uh, a couple times a week. Uh, we're grateful. Hey, somebody from Russia, that's awesome. Uh, but we're excited about this. Uh, this has been a great webinar series. We're going to continue this uh, for, for, uh, for next month as well. So if you have uh, great people that you want to nominate or, or you want to participate, let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to, to, uh, to, to take that into consideration. A couple quick things. First of all, thank you for, for being uh, there for us. We hope that we're providing a great uh, resource for you. We hope that you're learning, that you really enjoy our guest speakers, um, and that this is part of a, a great part of your day um, every Tuesday and Thursday. If you, if it's your first time here, uh, please come back. It's every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same place. Invite your friends, tell all your colleagues. We, we'd love to have as many people as possible. Uh, second thing is uh, just be safe. We, we continue to say that. We hope that you and your family are safe and healthy. Um, we're going to get over this. Uh, that we, we will all be stronger from, from this. And we hope that uh, through this, we come out even a stronger community in the customer success space as well. And the third thing is anytime you can give back, I think that uh, sometimes in, in dark days, one of the things that uh, gets me by is to kind of look out beyond my own uh, challenges and needs and try to find to help somebody else. And we we'll really encourage you to look around, find a colleague. There's been a lot of people who have been impacted, um, who have lost jobs during this. Um, great professionals, awesome professionals. Some of you are on this call uh, and just got caught in, in an unfortunate circumstances. So if you're hiring, please reach out, please post on Twitter, uh, uh, LinkedIn, go to our website. We have a page on our website that lists all job openings out there that we've been able to collect and we'll, we're continuing to, to, um, to compile that list. And you can also yeah, We've got submit. about 35 on there so far. So if you know of any yeah, others, let us know. We're updating it every day. We want a list of 100 or more. So if you're hiring, go to that page and you can also submit your jobs there. Um, but let's help those of our friends in, in the customer success community um, get back on their feet and, and be that much stronger. But thank you so much. So excited to have Megan here. She's a great friend of the company. ESG is great. They uh, success as a service. Their whole team is phenomenal. And we couldn't be uh, more thrilled to have her share her insights today. So. I'll, with that, I'll, I'll say thank you to everybody and I'll turn it back over to Mark and Megan. Thanks, Megan. Sweet. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. And um, yeah, like, like we always do, before we jump into things, we've got a bunch of new folks that have not been on, as well as I see a bunch of repeats. I see Bird, I see Klaus, I see Stacy, you know, a bunch of folks who have been on the previous series. So awesome to see you back. Um, Damien from Killarney, Ireland, my man right there. I think that's a new one. I'm not sure if I saw you on the previous one, but um, again, thrilled to, thrilled to have everybody back. And just before we jump into the main topic, 
Um, as always, I want to share a brief overview of client success for those of you who aren't familiar with us or might be just learning about us for the first time. And um, just to, to, to answer a few questions. So as, as we always say, we're a customer success growth platform. And really our focus is on helping customer success teams. Like most of you that are on the call, you're running customer success teams or you're on a CS team. Really what we do is we help you guys keep and grow your customers. So important right now. I see so many posts. I see so many uh, messages about, you know, there's a lot of companies running like they might not get any new customers this year. So you got to make sure you really are doing everything you can to keep and grow your existing customers. Our focus is on helping CSMs do everything they need to do all the way through the customer life cycle from onboarding through to adoption, through to renewal and through to growth. And so giving a CSM everything that they need, as well as informing their leaders, as well as giving everybody on the team or everybody in the company, everything that they need to do to know what's going on with customers, know about customer health, know about renewal health, know about revenue growth. All of those things are things that we help with. And so if you want our help with it, would love to have a conversation, shoot us a note. We're on Twitter at client success, or just visit us at clientsuccess.com. And again, we, we'd love to have a conversation with you, especially right now. So um, to, to, to move on from that, so just to kind of um, talk about the series. So as Dave mentioned, um, we've been doing this series ever since the beginning of March. And really what we started this was just an idea right when everybody started shifting to working from home and trying to figure out what to do in this crazy world that we now live in. Uh, we wanted to just provide some help. We wanted to provide some guidance, provide some content. And that's what started this, this series. And we've been getting a ton of love from you guys, uh, as well as getting a bunch of questions on, are we going to continue it? And so luckily, we've had a ton of people reach out to us, say, hey, I'd love to jump on and you know do more sessions with you. So we're going to keep it going. Right now, we have sessions scheduled all the way up through the end of the month. We have some serious heavy hitters. Folks like Patrick Campbell at ProfitWell, Julie Hogan at Drift, Kristen Hare at Success League, Andrew Mark at Success Hacker. We got a ton of really cool people that um, we're going to do more sessions with. So I'll send out more details later, but I just wanted to make sure you guys all know we're going to keep this going. And um, yeah, so we're excited for it. So jumping into today. So Megan, let's jump in. So we talked last back in January. And I don't think it's an understatement to say that we're in a little bit of a different world than we were back then. Would you disagree? No, a little different. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that right now. Um, and like, like Dave said before, I hope, you know, your family, I hope your friends, I hope your team, everybody's doing well. I was just on the phone with, um, with one of the future, future guests that we're going to have. And she was saying, um, they have a member on their team that they think has it, but very minor symptoms. And so she hasn't been tested yet. And I mean, we're just hearing more and more of those stories. So I hope, I hope you and your family are, are doing well through all this. Um, yes. So fortunate, like we're all healthy and happy. Um, yeah. I am learning how to be a first grade teacher, which is not a Me skill too. that I ever thought that I... And I'm terrible, <laughs> it, it turns out. Terrible. Yes. No. <laughs> No, um, but I mean, it's, I, and I don't know, like, I think we've all experienced a little of this, like, it's super challenging, like, it's okay to, like, feel, like, overwhelmed, right, um, and have those moments, and on the other side of it are, like, other really interesting dynamics happening with my family and my kid and, like, things mm -hmm. I'm learning and things we're all learning, and, um, so, you know, just every day, it's like that can, that can feel, that can feel good and that can feel hard. So, um, yeah. but, uh, I, but appreciate that we're all, we're all doing some version of it. So. Yep, exactly. So when, uh, when we started talking about kind of different topics, we, we went through various different topics that we could jump in and, and you proposed this topic of how to push through big projects during the slowdown. And I thought that was, you know, spot on for, for what a lot of people are thinking through. I mean, in a lot of cases, people are either slowing down or they have slowed down um, to varying degrees. And at the same time, we all have a ton of these projects we've been procrastinating or good ideas, but haven't raised to the level of urgency that, you know, to, to, to drive action. So 
we thought that'd be a, a great topic for us to, to jump into. Um, as always, we're going to keep it interactive. I think, Megan, you've probably got three or four slides of content, which I'll turn it over to you to share. And then, like we always do, we'll have um, the chat pane open. And so I see, you know, we, so, so I'll be kind of monitoring that as well as, you know, a few of you usually want to raise your hand and have me unmute you so we can have a conversation. We'll do a few of those. We're going to try to keep this very open, very Q&A, let's call it even maybe like a workshop type format. Um, and, you know, we're really, really excited. So I'm going to stop sharing on my side, Megan, and let you take over. Let's see. So you should be able to click play on your screen and share your slides. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Perfect. Looks great on my side. Okay. Um, so uh, a little bit of context. Um, the reason why I, I wanted to address this topic is I was trying to think of, you know, the days in the last few weeks that felt um, the most positive uh, and, and, and kind of like stepping back and saying like, what are things that we've been doing really differently that weren't really like in, from like an intent standpoint, they just were sort of happening. Uh, and what I found was both internally at my company and with customers that were helping, there were a number of, we're all super busy with projects and advancing programs. Um, that I don't know that we would have had the time and space to do had we not been in this unique circumstance. And so what I wanted to talk through was, number one, the importance of progress right now. Um, why, it's, why it's important to have goals and things that you want to move toward um, in this time and why it's a special time to be able to, to do that. Um, Number two is address the kind of initiatives that you can progress. So from an interactive standpoint, what I'd like to do during this conversation is potentially understand out there what kind of initiatives everybody's looking at or feeling around um, that might need some help in, in how to get those started um, or how to, how to, how to start um, putting together you know, a plan um, to, to advance. Um, and then uh, how do you start where you are? So we're here where we are today. Um, we have the people that we work with. We have certain things in place. Um, so how do you keep that in mind uh, when you get going? And then just brainstorming what are different project types and what are different strategies to approach those. And so first, just why is progress important? Uh, number one, it's motivating. So when we make advancements in the things that we care about. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that every person that's in customer success right now has a list of things that we all really want to be doing as part of our program that we just have not had time to do, right? Um, and that some of us, and I'm not saying everyone certainly, but there are, there are some of us who are like, hey, you know what, things have shifted a little bit and I might be able to refocus my energy. Um, and that's exciting. It's exciting to think that you can pick something up and move forward with it. Um, number two, it allows for creative thinking and collaboration with your team. Um, so starting off on, hey, we're going to make progress toward improving um, our knowledge base. We're going to make um, progress toward our digital communication. We are going to make progress toward um, certifying our team, right? There are a number of things that you can move forward and putting those plans together is a creative and fun process. Um, and those are collaborative. You get to do that with your team um, and achieve something as a group. Um, Three, it keeps us forward thinking. Um, there's a lot of activity right now that's uh, forcing us to think in the right now because right now is really important. Um, right now, I have to figure out how to make sure that I have conference calls scheduled and that I get work done and that my son still learns um, how to read and how to do math, right? That is all like immediate stuff <laughs> that is, that's really critical. Um, yep. But picking a project and moving forward with it, that's forward thinking. That's after. Um, and I think that's, that's, uh, that's healthy um, to, to think in that direction because um, we're all staring at our feet a whole lot right now. And most importantly, the progress does not mean completion or perfection. This isn't about picking some giant initiative and, 
and, and, and making sure it all gets done in a perfect way. It's about forward motion. Um, it's about meeting even small goals. You know, we talk about time to value and small wins with our customers all the time because um, it drives value for them. Um, it makes them feel good. Uh, it helps them move their business forward. Like apply that inward toward your initiatives, um, making those small, those small wins, those small steps forward where you can. And to that point, um, starting where you are. So um, what is already in place that can help you get to the next step? Um, are there projects or programs that you started marching down the road a long time ago and uh, had to abandon because other priorities took a precedent? Um, and so recognizing that, you know, as you, as you look at your landscape right now and you think like, hey, I really want to dig into starting a project, like, you know, where are you right now? Um, and what do you have at your, at your fingertips so you don't feel like you have to start from scratch? And secondly is you can create a team that you don't normally work with to advance a goal. So this is happening in my company. This is happening on behalf of my clients right now that we're pulling together groups of people that have a combined and a unified interest um, or a group of different skill sets that when you put them together can advance an initiative that isn't necessarily the core group of people that I normally work with every day. And so that's a really cool way to start working with um, folks in other organizations or on other teams um, to, to help you. Are there any natural ones that you've seen? Like I've seen some posts about people even like redeploying their sales team to be doing more customer success related tasks mm. or projects right now. Um, like w w what are you seeing more of right now? Um, what I'm finding is that um, like for us, it's been more around uh, finding people from disparate places that have unique skill sets gotcha. um, and bringing those together to advance a goal. So saying like, you know, hey, we have a client that needs to um, do a lot of creating foundational program pieces in the next 90 days, um, which means journey mapping and it means data and analytics and it means like a really tall order of things. Um, and so why don't we pick people from all different corners of the organization to help come and pitch in on that. Nice. Um, so I've seen that, but I really like what you're saying where if you have like teams of people that are less engaged right now, like it's hard to sell in this environment for sure. Um, and so, you know, as a sales team, where can you point your energy in another yeah. place? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've seen, uh, th there's a couple examples of, of projects right now in the chat pane. Um, we've got one that says some of their projects have included auditing renewal opportunities to ensure data is correct, yes. working on documentation, thinking of new data insights that they can share with their partners. Um, that's from Adele or Adule. I've never heard that name before. It's a, it's a beautiful name and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but thanks. Thanks Adelaide for that. The customer and then I you. see, see handshake. They've got a couple success teams, one for employers, one from universities. So they've actually went in and created a voice of the customer working group so they can pull together success mm. teams from all their different groups. Um, so those are, the, those are great. Um, Let's see, Ashley mentioned that um, CEO has, has tasked me with reaching out to clients that they've recently lost mm -hmm. to offer a discount to come back. And so they do federal employment law compliance. Uh, she's a new CSM mm -hmm. um, and, any, and she, she's wondering about any creative ideas for reaching out to lost clients. Let me come back a little bit to come on that one or do you wanna take that one right now, Megan? Um, yeah, I have to, I'm just gonna re-gear my brain um because that let's is come back your, to it. Yeah, yeah let's come back because i definitely want to address yeah. that because i now that i've seen that i'm sure that sort of initiatives happening all over the place so sure, yes, sure, sure. Let's yeah let's come back to it. we'll come back to you ashley um and so um i'm just going to run through a couple th quick things and then let's just start digging into um cool. these specific programs yeah. so here are some project types um, and examples of things that we're either doing internally at my company at ESG or things that we're doing along with our clients. Um, and to give everybody some context at ESG, what we do is we partner with companies to help them deploy, optimize and staff their customer success organizations. 
right? So at any point um, along a, a maturity scale for a customer success organization, we come in and help do all kinds of work um, with, uh, you know, tool deployment, with, um, you know, creating digital communication strategies with, um, you know, hiring customer success managers at our organization, reaching out to their end users, doing strategic work. So, um, you know, the environment we're in is sort of ripe for a lot of the things that we're talking about here. Sure. So some, some short term things. Um, so if you're thinking like, I just want to do some stuff right now, like just want to roll my sleeves up and, and, and make some things happen. Um, things like value stream mapping for your customers. Um, the one big thing right now, um, as Mark mentioned earlier, is our customers are so important right now and what they need is so important right now. So if you look at the, if you look at what you're providing as a solution and you look at where your customer is and how they're receiving that solution, how do you look at that from tip to tail and say, are there obstacles that I can remove to make sure the value of my solution is reaching my customers in the most effective way? Can they reach it? Do they understand it? Are they educated? Are they happy? Right? So where along that line um, can you see where you can remove those obstacles? Um, and that first step is really mapping that right, um, is just mapping that, that value stream. Um, second could potentially be a digital communication path. Um, you may have an opportunity right now to communicate and improve your digital communication either through in-app notifications or through email um, in a way that supports your customers and communicates to your customers. Um, and building out those strategies those communications, those workflows, um, leveraging a tool that you have that has that capability that maybe you're not fully using right now. Um, and even just launching like, hey, we've always wanted to launch a newsletter. I mean, now's a good time to launch the newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, you know, another a good example is creating training content. So um, either for your customers, for them to self-learn, like improving your knowledge base, creating more video content, um, reviewing how you know, accessible your, um, your training is for your customers, creating more walkthrough guides um, to put into an in-app notification, something like that, um, or internally, right? Like now's a really good time um, to brush up on, on training. So, um, I know there's, I think Success Hacker has, is doing some pretty significant discounting on their training right now if you want to get your CSMs trained um, or any kind of internal training content that you want to develop. Now may be a good time to do that for a short term type of project. Cool. Um, medium term. Uh, this is stuff that I would categorize as items that are generally iterative in nature, right? So things that need revisiting, that need polishing up over time and things that maybe get neglected over time um, and sort of just assume they're in their permanent steady state. So how your customers are segmented, re visiting your journey map. Um, is that still accurate? Um, and are you really leveraging in the right way? Um, looking at your adoption and your engagement metrics um, and the operations behind those. Um, those are places where often I see and hear customers say like, look, I have all this rich data. Here's what we're doing now. I've not had an opportunity to go a layer deeper on that. You know, now might be a good time to, to do that. And then some projects that we've seen from a long-term perspective are things like expanding customer success in other areas of the organization. Um, we have a client that uh, has an IoT solution that we've been working with, um, but their core business that is non-SaaS has been super interested in how to leverage customer success methodology within more traditional business types. Um, and so we've been working with them on a task force, an executive task force, to try to understand that. Um, and right now we, you know, we can meet across regions and geographies over Zoom and have some pretty lengthy sessions um, to really think through and understand some of that. Um, creating or looking at partner programs. You know, this is a big one. Like if you've got channel partners um, that are a critical part of the delivery of your solution, um, you know, a lot of companies are really trying to figure out how to create a good and effective partner program to deliver customer success to end users um, through your partner channels. And then the third one, something I have, you've just been wanting to explore for yes. forever. I know that, that I've actually had that one top of mind for, for my team here at Client Success. And so we've actually started exploring, you know, two or three opportunities just in that in the last month. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And the, the, there's no, there's no like template today to how to do that. So, um, or to your point, like starting to have those conversations, right. And just look at, you know, how you might want that to look and feel and like talking to your partners about what they need to feel enabled, um, to sure. be successful. Um, and then the last one I have here is tool optimization. So we all have lots of tools, um, mm -hmm. CS tools and CRMs and data analytics and all kinds of things that we at one point or another implemented and probably had a much bigger picture of like what we wanted to do with those, those technology solutions. Um, and now might be a time to open that up for yourself a little bit um, and you know get with whoever your CSM is at that organization and say hey look like I really want to leverage this to do this this other piece that we never got to what might that look like yeah and if you haven't done this yet um, you, you you might be forced to do it yourself or forced to do it externally because I mean every CFO is going around doing a tool optimization exercise. And so, you know, we, we, we've seen that where people are saying, okay, I, I now need to be able to doubly justify every spend that I'm making. And so yeah. if your CFO hasn't already asked you to do this, she's going to, so you sh this is something to just get ahead of and say, look, these are the, this is the technology stack that we're using. Here's the value all of it brings. Here's our usage of each. And here's why each of these is a critical component to our technology stack. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like if you have a tool in house that you're advocate that you like that you're advocating for, but potentially could be at risk from a spend perspective, because you're like the value isn't reaching your leadership, like, you know, now's a good time to make sure that that's front and center. Sure, exactly. <clears throat> Um, and then the only other slide I have here, and then um, I would love to just start digging into some examples um, is our deployment strategies for this. So like, how do you get started doing? Um, and these are some, just some very general ways of getting started down that path. So number one is leveraging sprints. Uh, we use two week sprint cycles pretty regularly here um, when we're building out programs and they're nice because you can say, hey, group of five people, um, here are the things that we want to advance. And um, you know, here's how they're gonna get done in th this two week period. Um, and then you can set up these, you know, these nice like two, three, four week sprint cycles where you're, you know, advancing what you can advance within those pockets of time. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and so that's something that we like to use. Um, number two is MVP. So minimum viable product. Again, don't need to approach this with like perfection in mind, but let's say there's a new program or a new initiative you'd like to start and you're thinking like, okay, what does the minimum viable product look like for this? Like what is, what is the, like the initial collection of things that need to exist in order for us to say like we've built the foundation? for this program. Um, and that's a really nice um, way to, to capture that. Um, also a phased approach. So do things in phases. Don't try to bite everything off at once. Um, life's a little unpredictable right now. So if you try to like launch some project that's gonna take 18 months to complete, that might be tricky. Um, but if you have a phased approach um, that's a little bit shorter term, that is um, it's more doable. Uh, even just a list like just make a list of the things that you'd like to accomplish and what it would take to accomplish those. Um, this other piece about getting value to your customers faster. Again, if you're feeling a little like this feels ambiguous and yes, there's lots of stuff that I'd like to do, but where, you know, like what matters most, I'd say if any one of those initiatives is, um, blocking value getting to your customers in any way, like if you can, if you can make that better for them, start with something like that. Um, and then the last one just to revisit is like work with creative teams, like think outside of your normal group that you work with um, and think of who else you can work with in your organization um, to accomplish your goals. Awesome. That's really good. Um, and so, so let's, let's switch gears. I mean, there, there's already a bunch of questions in the Q and a, I've got a few questions here. And so the way we'll kind of manage this is, Again, if, you, if you'd like for, if you've got a question or if you've got a topic you'd like to dig into, you'd like me to read it off, cool. Like a lot of you are doing, pop it in the chat pane and I'll be going through and monitoring that. 
Um, if you would like to be unmuted and you can actually have a conversation around, you know, maybe like workshop an idea that you're of a, of a topic that you're working on, um, just go ahead and use the raise hand button. You should have that at the bottom of your, of your Zoom. Um, if you hit the raise hand button, I'll be able to unmute you and then we'll be able to, to have a combo around that. Um, so let, let's come back to, to Ashley's question from a few minutes ago. Um, so just to repeat, so what she's got here is she says, our CEO is tasked me with reaching out to clients that they've recently lost and offer them a discount to come back. Um, they work with a lot of you know, federal law compliance, et cetera. So she's a new CSM, former HR professional of 20 years. And she's wondering, do you have any creative ideas for reaching out to clients to entice them to come back? Like, so, so I'd say, let's look at that, but also like, how do we, what type of a project would you kind of put in place around that, Megan? Um, so I think it's like identifying, um, so if I were to start with something like that, it would be, you know, of course, number one is like, who are these customers, right? Who are the stakeholders that we want to reach? Um, what, and then what value we're trying to drive for them, right? So there's, there's a little bit of the, like the win back. Mm -hmm. flavor to this sure. right yeah. um, but it's also like hey you've worked with us in the past um and you know that was maybe good bad or otherwise um, but here we are and, and we'd like to op make, make you an offer to to do this at a very like discounted mm -hmm. rate for you to come partner with us again um and so from a project standpoint i think it would be like um you know, this Ashley is Ashley, like, do you have what you need to have those conversations, right? Like I would think about gathering, you know, does the historical data of these engagements live somewhere that you have access to, right? So like before you get on the call, are you able to have, you know, an intelligent conversation around, hey, like you worked with us at this time, this is what we were doing together, this is what worked right? Like here's what we were thinking about partnering again, right? Just making those conversations really meaningful. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you're just asking them for something. Yeah. Right? And especially like being able to, to provide the context. We had these conversations. This is what worked for us. And this is probably also like an ability, you'll probably need to segment the group of companies you go after. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the same conversation. Sometimes you have you know, in the sales world where if somebody offers you a deal, quote unquote, to do something within a given period of time, but you weren't going to do business with them anyway, you know, you can offer all the, the best deals in the world. Who cares? So in Ashley's case, one thing I'd challenge you guys to think through is as you're qualifying is trying to decide, like, how do we segment the customers that are on the, on the edge of like, we, we even have an opportunity to bring them back for one reason or another. You know, if, if this company has laid off 90% of their workforce because they're a movie theater and they really, th there's no ability for them to come back, going out and enticing them, it doesn't matter what you entice them with, it'll be impossible to bring somebody like that back. Um, what about, um, so, so you've got here on the slide, you've got some short term, like under short term, you've got value stream mapping. Um, creating content you've got in the medium term journey mapping for those of us on the call that aren't familiar with value stream mapping or journey mapping or some of these concepts you're talking about, mm -hmm. where would you recommend they go to, to learn about that? Is that something you guys have on your website? Is there a resource you'd recommend? Is there something um, we should put in the chat pane later? Oh yeah. So let me, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. So um, we do have some things on our website. Um, we do have a knowledge base, um, that's good value stream mapping. Um, if you investigate, like if you look up ITIL, I T I L, um, you can get some pretty good templates on how to do that. Um, and then there are a number of different, um, platforms that help you do things like journey mapping, right? So, um, like Miro is a good one. Uh, Carrie Bodine, uh, who I know like spoke at CS 100 last year, her website, she's got some really good information um, there as well. And like templates that you can use. Um, I think from like, for like simplicity's sake, 
right? Um, that if you and, and we can and we can definitely like send some things out. Um, but if you talk about that value stream mapping, it's a lot around what is the value that you're trying that your company wants to create for your company or for your customers, right? And really capturing that we are solving these problems, we are giving them these ability, right? It's all that stuff that customer success cares about. Like what is successful for you? Um, and then from the point in time where that's like generated and thought of, right? And like, let's say that software, um, and then, you know, and then, you know, by the time that customer has then bought that thing and starts using it, um, often there's like some diluted stuff that happens during that process, right? Like there is an examination of all the possibilities that happens during the sales process, right? And then onboarding happens and then adoption happens and then reality happens, right? And um, there might be things that are on the company to help the customer really like realize that that value. And so just really knowing like, on your side and on the client side, like where are those things getting stuck, right? Is it that there's, um, you don't, you, there are stakeholders that aren't involved that need to be in order to like this tool to get like fully utilized? Um, is onboarding really tricky because you don't have a comp, like a comprehensive training for it, right? Um, and there's, it, and it has to happen like fairly independently on the client side. And so they're having a hard time like, really getting into it. Um, are you seeing customers churn for some particular reason that you may have some control over, yeah. right? Um, and so that's really the idea of that is like getting that high, like stepping out and up and then looking at everything um, sure. and, and getting that down on paper. But yeah, we can send so, you some good, um, some good places to resource that. Was that, was that I-T-I-L or I-T-E-L? I-T-I-L, I-T-I-L. ITIL. So if people Google that, they should be able to find it. Yeah. If you go um, to like ITIL and like value stream mapping, you can find some good stuff there. Okay, cool. So like coming back to like the types of projects. So like mm -hmm. we've had some people like talk about the, the types of projects that they're doing. So like Mira mentions, we're working on automation of our processes and making sure that all data is in one place and being consistent. And so that feels to me very like internal operational we're looking at all of our internal processes automation etc mm -hmm. um, i've seen some examples of people that are doing more let's call it external facing um, processes maybe they're focused on you know customer case studies um, getting a more recent nps um, campaign set up and running I'm curious for you like what, what's your what, what's your thoughts on sh should be, folks be focused on a little bit more internal processes like the automation, like the training content, like, like that type of stuff or more external stuff where they're, you know, sending stuff out to their customers. Do you have any thoughts or opinions there? Yeah, I think it depends on where you like your, some of your biggest pain is coming from. Um, okay. What I will say about things like data cleanup is, um, if, if there's any kind of like digital work or efficiency, you're trying to create, I think right now that's probably a big deal, right? So things like cost inside your company are going to, you know, have a, have a pretty big microscope on it for the rest of the year. Um, things like getting your data cleaned up can have a huge impact on that, sure. right? So uh, if I think about, you know, how many companies have like pretty significant initiatives they'd like to do, but are like, man, my data's garbage and we mm -hmm. just haven't been able to clean it up. Um, now's a great time for that. Like I can see exactly why you would do something like that. Um, but that also holds true. I think for things like case studies and use cases and voice of customer, right? Like these are all things that wind up lower priority on a list somewhere, um, at different times that are surfacing right now. So I, I just look at, um, you know, what's most important to your company, right? And like, you know, not having those things, like what is that blocking you from, right? So, um, and I, I would say things like case studies and use cases and things like that and capturing those and getting those front and center tend to be things that get missed, that can have a really big impact on the sales and marketing side. Um, but yeah, I mean, data is critical to sure, the, sure. the machine that you're running. So I think both of those are really great categories of, of things to work on. So, so Stephen here, he has a question that um, 
Well, I'll just read off his question and then we can talk through it. So his, okay. his question is, any advice on how to keep our customers or end users motivated to continue through our data collection and implementation processes? Mm -hmm. you know, my team's motivated and incentivized to keep moving forward, but we're seeing delays and excuses from everyone else. I mean, sure. I think we're seeing this a lot. They're saying, look, you know, we, we might have purchased this platform. We might have done this thing and we're trying to onboard our customers, but you know, other, other priorities are coming up. There's other things that are, that are getting in our way and almost it, it sounds like it's creating this, this, this extra challenge where, you know, it sounds like his team's incentivized, his team's actually comped on getting this data back from customers and get them onboarded. But, you know, the, the customers aren't able to prioritize this. Curious, what, what, what advice do you have there? Well, and this is hard anyway, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I think even, that even this, is, times, right? this is super challenging, even in the best of circumstances. And so, um, and I mean, yeah, I mean, people are uh, less focused right now um, and activities like that, that are outside of someone's like core responsibility, right? Like often if, you, if it's up to your customer to give you data and be part of the implementation that is secondary to their core job, right? And so this is difficult. Um, uh, one of the things that you can do is, um, I, I mean, this is where like time to value can be really important. So if you're, there's, there's stuff that, um, Steven, I would assume like you're tracking on your side that are implementation milestones, right? That are like, we get this data, we set up stage, we, da -da -da -da, right? Like there's that whole list. Um, getting really focused on what the customer wants to accomplish at this period of time can help. Um, I think on one side, like there's just has to be an expectation that things are not going to happen as quickly today as you'd like them to. Um, and having some empathy around that and understanding really the reasons why that's happening on your customer side is gonna be, I think, important to continuing that trusting relationship. Um, and so doing a fair amount of like listening and being understanding about that. And then the flip side is, okay, so, but here's why this is getting this thing implemented and in place is really important for your company, right? And I'm gonna help you see that because you may not see that right now. Um, and keeping that front and center. So if, if there's some output of your solution that's super important for their company and really keeping that as your North Star might help um, versus just trying to like push people on, you know, that onboarding checklist, mm -hmm. for instance. And the only thing I would add to that is, let's say you go through and you're able to, to do all that and you're able to, you know, express the value of getting this data back and you know that all that value is clearly communicated and you're still having a tough time um for purposes of the morale of your team like you mentioned that your team is incentivized to keep it moving forward you might need to go back and revisit that you might need to re revisit how your team is incentivized at least for you know the, the next x period of time um because already your team's morale is probably being hit by um you know the fact that they're having a tougher time doing their job than they were six months ago um at the same time if they're taking a drastic hit on their compensation because they're the way that they're incentivized um is you know not mm -hmm. working today I, you, you might need to go chat with your cfo chat with your ops chat with chat with whoever needs to to to, to be involved there and that might you know, need to be adjusted at some point. Uh, That's a really good point. That? No, I think, and then as you're talking, I think it's two things. I think it's one, revisiting the project plan. And does that make sense right now, the way that it is? And two, yeah, those those um, those milestones and like where you're incented and, and how, and making sure that is all aligned, um, I think is, is the right approach, because that's true. Because back to your short-term, you know, topic on the slide in front of us, what you might say is, look, you know, the, the, the best thing for us to do right now is instead of continuing to bombard our customers with getting data back to us, maybe I should deploy some of my resources to actually create a, the training content, C creating all the training content that actually discusses why it's important for the company to, to do X, Y, and Z. Um, you might deploy some of those resources and obviously that's a, that, that, that's a longer discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. But those are all things that I'd be thinking about right now. Cool. Um, 
earlier you talked you talked about two week sprints. Um, yeah, and I think that's I, I've always loved the idea, and I think part of the challenge with kind of some of the ways that I, I personally thought about two week sprints in the past is that sometimes it's seen as okay, let's drop everything and go do X for two weeks, mm. and if you have the luxury to do that great. I don't think most of us have the ability to do that right now because um, we still have a day job. We still have you know, other things that we have to take care of. Yeah. So what's your advice in, in that situation where somebody says, look, I'd like to do some type of a, a sprint. I'd like to be able to time box something, make measurable progress, but also I have to balance the fact that I've still got to talk to my customers. I've still got to do kind of my day job. How, how do you see companies balancing that? Um, yeah, I think for us, we've definitely leveraged, I think, sprints as a way to package and categorize that work separate from uh, other work, right? Okay. So I think versus saying like, you know, I, I, there's no like hard and fast rule. I think that's the nice part is that you can say like, you know, I think but let's say you have a team and everyone's like, I got a little bit of bandwidth and, 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 and as you're doing a sprint planning session, right? So if you have everybody that's on the team in a, well, not in a room, in a zoom room <laughs> and, and uh, you're like, Hey, look with, with everybody's little bit of bandwidth they have um, you know, let's say we all want to accomplish making um, three training videos for our customers in the next two weeks right with the time we have do we think we can do that with the resources and the time we have available yes or no and everybody will go yeah and we'd say you'd say okay so in week one like here are the things we're going to do here are the meetings we're going to have here's what we're going to accomplish at the end of that first week we're going to look at it and say hey do we feel like we are on track to completing this in two weeks and maybe something happens like hey you know what like jerry got pulled into this escalation like he's out and you're mm -hmm. like okay cool you know what we're just going to do two then does that make sense? Awesome. So then that final week you, you know, get the decks built out, you get your zoom set up, you get like people rehearsed. They, they, you know, record the session. You have your marketing person there or, you know, whoever to say like, okay, this is where we're going to plug this stuff in. Um, and then you deploy those two training videos from, you know, even potentially if the CSMs on your team, like you can do it in a way that's very, uh, manageable without making it like a, like a big giant thing. And what I like about that is like, A, you're saying, look, at, at the beginning of this, we thought we were gonna be able to accomplish X, maybe three training videos. Things changed partway through. And you know we had to, to shift Jerry off to this project, but we're still focused on progress, not necessarily, we're, we're not throwing the whole project aside because we're losing Jerry halfway through. We're still able to get two of the three done. <laughs> So that's helping us to focus on progress, not perfection, right? Yes. Um, which I think is a good point. Um, so on your, on your slide here, you also talked about partner programs. Mm -hmm. And curious if we can kind of unpack that a little bit. Jay says, you know, he, he's wondering if you can kind of give some descriptions or examples of the types of partner programs that you see out there. This probably could be a whole, you know, topic in and of itself talking about, you know, how to, how to build a partnership program, but just kind of at a high level for, for you, Megan, what are some of the types of partner programs that you see people kind of double clicking into right now? Um, so a couple of examples, one would be, you have um, some of, you know, these more established technology organizations, right, that have been around a long time that have some pretty uh, significant distribution channels, right? And then sometimes in addition to that, like a reseller model underneath that. So you're literally like two steps away from your end user. Um, but here we are, you know, creating a services model and um, there's no customer success track. <laughs> big problem to solve, right? Sure. Um, and so, you know, what we're walking through with some of our clients are things like, okay, TSIA has some great content right now around like, what are the critical pieces to working with 
your partners, right? Um, number one are things like having a good data exchange. So your partners have a ton of really good information you don't have. You as the vendor have a lot of good information they don't have. How are you sharing that? Um, to make sure that your customers are getting what you need and that your partners are getting what you need, right? So that's one example of like, okay, what do my partners need and what do I need, right? Um, or having the types of conversations that are like, it's really important to me that my end users have this very specific customer success experience, right? Um, but I don't own the relationship with my customers. My partner does. Um, so how do we work together to get aligned on that and say, is some of that now getting handed off? Like, is there an eventuality where like, I am now in touch with customers that I didn't have a relationship before? Or is that something you partner want to do? Um, so there's that type of stuff, right? And that is, that is, can be very, very heavy. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Um, secondly, <laughs> secondly is um, things like creating a partner program. So, you know, like Mark, I think companies like yours are exploring, like, how do I um, help to, to advance my solution in the marketplace by leveraging um, partner, you know, potential partners in, in, in my world, um, that could lever, you know, that could speak to my, um, solution as part of their offering, or it's an add in to part of their solution or like my technology and their services work together really well. Like how do we work together? Um, and so I think to your point, if we're talking about making progress, what you could do in a sprint is say, okay, in the next two weeks, we're going to have the following conversations with the following people to discover these five things, right? Um, what are the five things that we want to know to even start to march down this road? Um, yeah. So those are two varieties. Um, and if, but if there's something else to, um, those are, I think those are the two big ones we see though. Yeah, I agreed. And I mean, but like I said before, I think building a building a channel partner, building a partner program, we could do a whole series mm -hmm. on that. The, the main thing that I would say on that is if, if that's something you're going to explore and something you want to think about, um, think really hard about, you know, the, the economics of the business that you're trying to partner with and what, what value can you bring to them? Do you have some unique service offering that they can add. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been doing X and by bringing in your service that allows them to extend their service. Do you have a, just a distribution channel for them? Is there a way for you to just bring a bunch of extra leads and new business opportunities for them? That's something to think about. Um, Cause um, yeah, especially in, in all these times, like everyone's trying to figure out how do they, how do they eke out some level of, of growth? Like you mentioned resellers, there's a lot of cases mm -hmm. where a reseller, a software reseller, they might be selling uh, three or four different product suites. I'm partnered with company A, B, C, D, and I sell all of these. Well, products A and B, turns out those are in really hard hit industries right now. And so, you know, me as a reseller, I'm seeing a big downtick in my business because, you know, the, the two products that I've been reselling um, are in a really bad position. So you know, I, I'd be looking at those resellers saying, you know, is there something that I can do to help them? Can, can my product fill a gap in their business right now? So um, whole, whole different ball of wax to, to figure out how to go build a partner program and happy to, to chat through on that. Um, well, good. Um, I think we've got through most of the questions. We've got five minutes left on the, the calendars or on the calendar, on the clock. Um, so Megan, just kind of any last words that, that, that you'd like to share, any last motivation, any, anything that you want to share with everybody before we, before we call it a day? Um, I just want to open up uh, to reach out um, to me directly, if you'd like, um, and that's pretty easy to do through our website. If you are like, shoot, I want to do this thing. I just need like a good way to step forward, like in a more tactical way so you know the, we didn't have a lot of time today but if it, if you're like hey i'm trying to organize this or think through the first step or like um you know like what kind of tools do you like to use to do x y and z thing like just please let me know um because i can point you, point you in the right direction so i just want to you know say like at esg like the, these are these are all the types of things we do all the time um and so we're really happy to give 
you know, give help where we can um, if you, if, you know, this inspired you to, to want to move forward. So just please let me know awesome. and um, really appreciate everybody's time today. Truly. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, it's been, it's been really good. Appreciate your time. Appreciate everybody else's time. Great questions. Um, and again, just as we always say, make sure that you're staying safe, you're staying busy um, and do, doing everything you can. And as I mentioned, we are going to continue. I think as of right now, most of your calendar invites ended as of today. Um, and I might ask some of you to, to help me because I'm going to go in and make some edits in Zoom and hopefully extend the calendar invites that you have out um, to the end of the month so you can have all the other sessions that we're going to be doing. Um, but I'll send out some notes. So again, thanks for everybody's time and you know, really look forward to, to keep chatting. And uh, thanks again, Megan. Thanks, Mark. See Thanks, everybody. everybody.